Hi guys, it's Texas Witch here, and uh, today I am making some Southern Classic favorites. Link to our gaming channel in the description. And one of the things that I'm going to be making are some riblets, some pork ribs here, right here. Delicious. These are big, fat ones, and I'm really excited about this. Now. We're gonna put these out on our pan here. Ooh. These are some big meaty ribs. And we need to, the first thing I like to always do is a dry seasoning. And then you need a little bit of liquid. So I'm gonna do, sorry, I gotta wash my hands. I've got pork hands. Okay. So you always need a little bit of liquid. So, I have mixed together something here. It's one of my favorite things. It's not long to start beer this time, people. <laughs> it's, um, I like to take some sweet and spicy barbecue sauce, a little bit of Pepsi or Coca-Cola. I use Pepsi. And, um, a little bit of, I already put in the ground mustard, a little bit of paprika. Just give it a little bit of smoky flavor. Um, like to record the chant and get to the person who's recording and to just a little tiny bit of um, I use a special celery seasoning a Cambridge celery seasoning for my spice shop and I like to just put come on while she's messing with that just a little bit in there go to the description you don't want to go it. overboard there are a few links in the description Maybe. You just mix this right up. This is going to be your wet, um, your liquid. But the first thing any good cook knows to do is to season. So I like to use this is a seasoning. So good. Richard's seasoning. I've used this before on my channel. It's a great reason. In your only other video here. Yeah. Not not her only video ever because I mean gaming channel. Like description. Even it not being cooked, it just looks so good. It's going to be amazing, actually. How could it not be tasting good? It's made by a YouTuber. <laughs> okay. So, let's lay these out. And then we're going to go with the wet right over the top there. Let's get it in all the crevices all right and boom that just goes in the oven I like to cook them low and slow till the end and then I like to crisp them up so I'll probably put it in the oven at about two uh, maybe 300 just because I'm kind of in a hurry normally I'd go 275 but I already got my mashed potatoes working. So, for this time, we're going to stick it in. The oven. The oven. Because this time we're not in our living room. Sorry if you hear Mickey Mouse in the background. Yeah. Go at three. You know what? Let's go at 325. Because... Ribs for today. Stick these bad boys in. I think last time we did either ribs or pork chops. Um, I think I did a pork roast last yeah, time. Yeah, you did a pork roast. <clears throat> yeah. 
Listen, I'm a southern girl. I like my pork. I don't know what to tell you. That's, that's how I roll. Okay, so for my mashed potatoes, what I like to do is, as you can see, I've boiled a pot of potatoes here. I skin them, but I don't skin them all the way because I like to have little bits of skin in my mashed potatoes. First of all, it's the healthiest part of the potato. And secondly, I feel like it adds texture and flavor to your mashed potatoes. The only problem is a lot of people, when they use the skins, they'll just leave them whole and leave the skins on. And then I find them a little too thick, a little too hard to chew. I don't like that. So I sort of meet somewhere in the middle and do half skins, you know. So right now I've got a, um, this and I've got to come on over here and get out, drain out some of the juice. Now I boil mine in chicken stock because um, it just gives the potatoes a really good flavor. And also you can use some of the chicken stock remaining in the pot in your mashed potatoes. Ooh. Say guys, a video. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right. I like to leave a little bit of juice on the bottom there. Don't worry, people. My sexy gaming is mostly centered aside from the name. And then you gotta mash them up. So what you need is a good, good old-fashioned potato masher. I have a really nice one here. I don't like the plastic ones because they just don't work as well, frankly. And um, you just go to town on mashing. Now this is going to take me a while. I really don't have a recipe for my mashed potatoes. Pretty much everything I cook comes out a little bit different every single time based on what ingredients I have available what kind of mood I'm in, how I'm feeling, like seasoning things. One thing I can tell you, always required for my mashed potatoes is some um, cream or half and half or milk. This time I don't have cream or half and half, so I'm gonna use milk. Um, like I mentioned before, definitely um, chicken stock or really any kind of stock. I've used vegetable stock before. I've used um, beef stock um, before, but chicken's my favorite and it gives it the best flavor, I believe. Then um, sometimes I get crazy. I put, you know, I might put a little, little cheese. I might put in, I always put in pepper because pepper. I might put in a little cheese. I might put in a little um, sour cream. Sometimes I put in cream cheese. You know, I just fill it out. The trick to good mashed potatoes is consistency and flavor. If you have a good mashed potato, you do not need gravy. Your mashed potatoes should stand alone. If you want to add gravy, that's great, but they need to taste like this is the, this is the dish. The gravy is just, you know, if you want it. I personally Side prefer, dish. yeah, I personally, the only time I need gravy on my mashed potatoes is if they don't have enough flavor. And my mashed potatoes always have enough flavor. Because why? Texas switch. That's why. All right. You should make a have a brag tutorial. <laughs> All right. So thanks for joining me, guys. Um. This is going to come out of the oven later and be delicious. Maybe I'll make another video. Please subscribe. Please subscribe. Like and subscribe. Also, a uh, link in the description to um, my channel and to Texas Witch uh, Gaming Channel. Yep. Thanks. Bye. Bye.